Uh, please welcome to the stage Angus McLean. <laughs> Followed by the wonderful Lindsay Collins, Dominic West, Ellen DeGeneres, and Andrew Stanton. Please welcome. Oh, I know, I'm like. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm gonna boy. sit back and relax. This is yeah. nice. Oh. Cozy. So I don't want to embarrass anybody here, but... But you do. But I do it all the time. But in 2003, there was a movie called Finding Nemo, and it was, safe to say, incredibly successful. 99% Rotten Tomatoes, biggest selling DVD of all time. So how long did you think we might have to wait for a sequel if we were to get one? Uh, <laughs> I honestly, I was very vocal. I think there's a lot of... Uh, evidence online that I said that was it, like there would be no sequel. And then somebody that's sitting here kept Where? <laughs> bringing up Dominic. a sequel. <laughs> um, although even then I was like, I don't know, you know, it, it, I, I've done enough work on all these other films to know it has to be a really good story, a really good idea. With has to, and so I got busy with doing other things and it wasn't until 2011 we had to watch the uh, 3D version of a release of it. So I hadn't seen the film in like seven years. It's I, good. And I watched, yeah, <laughs> and I watched it, and uh, maybe for the first time like an audience member, and I walked out going, I am so worried about Dory. <laughs> like she, has, she hasn't found her family. She, she could lose the family she has. She's still apologizing for her short-term memory loss, but yet we all love it. And I, as a writer, I was ashamed at how unresolved she was. And so that's really what motivated it. So happy to hear that. <laughs> you were ashamed of it. I was ashamed. <laughs> what was a typical Ellen email like in terms of, I don't suppose you've given any more thoughts to a uh, Finding Nemo sequel. You never did it by email. No. You always did it very publicly. No, I had a talk show. I didn't need email. I had a talk show. I had a platform. It was, it was so easy to do. Had I not had a talk show, we would not be sitting here today, I don't think. Um, <laughs> But no, it was um, it was it really just became content for the show. It was a joke because every sequel that came out for every other movie, it was just like, oh my god, are you kidding me? And and then it became a running joke. And then he ruined. Then my joke was over because he he did the movie. <laughs> so now I have no more jokes. Can I just say, <laughs> of all the ways to ruin a joke, this is one of the best ones. Oh, good. Your hats off. Good. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So it's decided. There's going to be a Finding Dory. Yes. How do your co-conspirators get involved? How does this all come together? Well, um, Lindsay is my sort of uh, co-partner in crime and has been for, what, 16 years now. And so she's the first person to know if I have any inkling. So I privately uh, told her I was kind of thinking of stuff. Um, I don't know if you want to run with that a little <laughs> bit. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, Andrew always, uh, whenever he solves a movie, it's almost like a visible thing. Um, when we're working on it, you can see that there's actually a, like a, a split second of relief, and then immediately he there's something else that starts taking up that part of his brain. Um, and so uh, I've learned kind of over the years to expect that, and uh, and to not take it lightly when he kind of throws off a comment like, "Yeah, I'm kind of worried about Dory," and then moves on to something else. And I was like, "Wait a minute, he's never said that before." So um, so yeah, he, we talked about it, but we kept it very very quiet. And I think he talked about, about it a few soon yeah, after. It, it was sort of a if. There hypothetically. Was, uh, hypothetically, yeah. if there was a sequel, would you be interested in hypothetically joining me on this hypothetical journey? <laughs> and I said, hypothetically, yes. So, uh, yeah. It was pretty early on. Then we well, kept it pretty quiet. But you, even internally in Pixar, you couldn't yeah. say finding anything yeah. or you yeah. just knew it would be made. <laughs> yeah. So. so, Dominic, you you get contacted. They ask you whether you want to be part of this film. Was it to brag about? Yeah, I can't keep any secrets, so <laughs> I, think, I, I, think, I think Andrew probably knew that and so didn't tell me. Um, but I yeah, immediately said, of course, uh, well, I don't know if I said I wouldn't tell anyone, but I immediately told all my, well, my kids, obviously, <laughs> thinking, well, they're not going to tell anyone. Interesting, of course, they all told all their friends. And so I, I, I think it was, uh, well, uh, th they'd anticipated that, so I, it, it, it didn't seem to spill any beans, but it did get me a lot of kudos at home which is all I long for. Yeah, <laughs> literally what it's all about. Don't they get bored though, because you tell a kid something that's gonna happen two years later that's like saying a lifetime from now. Right, I'm right. they're like, whatever, it's not happening. It'll be out in just 2016. Yeah. 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 But my daughter's called Dora, so she was particularly interested, you know. Nice. That's what it's gonna be called. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I think not, but maybe. Um, so, time for you guys to ask some questions as well. Um, I've got one here, right at the front. I gather. 
please, would you like to say something? So I thoroughly enjoyed the movie, and therefore I made you a gift to say thank you. But first, I'd like to ask you a question. So if anyone was finding Ellen, what three things could they possibly do to track you down? Turn on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Look at YouTube. Look at Ellen Tube. It'd be pretty easy to find me. <laughs> Give me my gift. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Also, heads up, is You're it? You're not going to open it? Do you want me to open it in front of people? Yeah. I think it's a yeah. <laughs> I think it's a yeah. yeah. You really can't keep a secret. No. You to know what everything is right away. Ah. Uh. Did you draw this? Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. It's a memory game. I think that oh, she's. It's a memory game. I actually think that she's auditioning to work for you. <laughs> it's like animation. Yeah, you flip wow, it. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. That's cool. That's awesome. Well, very cool. Thank you very much. Um, please, this gentleman here, your name and where you're from? Uh, Nick from uh, Kids Call It. Um, uh, firstly, the film is amazing. As my kids have grown up with the original, I dare say my grandkids will grow up with this one, so it's fantastic. Um, I have a question for, for Ellen um, from my son, um, Hag, who's 11. Um, he would like to know, do you still enjoy eating fish now that you've played a fish for so long? It's hmm. a good question, Hank. Um, well, when we, when we did uh, Nemo, I was eating fish, and then I became a vegan for most of those years, and then I just recently started eating fish. Um, I don't eat Out fish. Out of anger? Yes, I'm furious. <laughs> <laughs> Out of retaliation that there was no sequel. <laughs> and I'll eat fish. Um, I don't eat blue tang. You can tell Hank I don't eat blue tang. <laughs> and I rarely eat fish. I don't eat meat or anything, but, but I don't really enjoy eating fish, tell him. I don't know what to tell him. I don't have children. <laughs> it, it seems like a horrible question. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. That would be OK. <laughs> don't answer it. Top that. Tell him I don't know. <laughs> Gentleman here in the burgundy polo shirt. Oh, it's in very nice. Hi, guys. Simon from GT Magazine. A general question to whoever wants to answer it, but every good, in fact, every great family film has a message. What is the message of Finding Dory? Ooh. Uh, you're all looking at me. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, being the, one of the writers of it, it the intention was self-acceptance, uh, that we all have something about us. It could be as obvious as a disability, like short-term memory loss, but it also could just be the way you think, the way you perceive things where you see your, ha, yourself as having a shortcoming, but it's actually what makes you special, what makes you unique. And, um, and I think we find a certain peace once we start to really learn who we are uh, and accept that. And, uh, and that's really what I felt Dory had to go through uh, to really be confident if she was ever alone again. And, and it ended up being sort of a universal thing that I think could apply to anybody at any age. Beautiful. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't have to tell you that. No, so. I, didn't know. I didn't get any of that from that film. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so when you first cast Ellen, what was that like? How did that begin? Uh, the, uh, the truth is, is I, I, I had a, fish, a, a worried father <coughs> clownfish that was trying to go across the ocean to find a son, and I needed a guide. And all I knew, I read this fact that a goldfish has a memory of three seconds. And I thought that was hilarious. And so I thought, what if I had a fish with short-term memory loss? But everything I was writing was repetitive and not funny. And Ellen had an original sitcom called The Ellen Show in the 90s that was playing at the time that I was writing. And, uh, and, I, and I was stuck. And I heard her on the show while the TV was playing uh, change the subject five times in one sentence. And I was like, that's it. That's, that's how you do it. And then I could not get her specific voice out of my head. And suddenly I was out of writer's block. And I was just writing like furious. So, uh, when I sent her the script, it's the only time I've ever written with a specific actor in mind. Um, and uh, I called you. You had read the script, and I said, hi, Ellen, I'm Andrew Stanton. I wrote this part for you, and if you don't take it, I'm screwed. But I used a harder word than that. <laughs> and you said, well, I better take it. I think that was that short of a conversation. Well, I had no job offers at the time, so that was... <laughs> okay. I hadn't worked in three years. I was thrilled that someone <laughs> called me for anything. <laughs> I was about to work at the Olive Garden. I was like... <laughs> I, was, I couldn't believe I was being offered anything, much less a part in a, a Pixar film from yeah. you. So it was amazing. Yeah. And it's a bit flattering when someone basically says, you're my muse. 
I, I need you to do this part. You're the bumbling idiot that is in my head. You're, <laughs> you're, your voice is so repetitive. You're the like bumbling crazy. idiot beneath yeah. my wings. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Was, was it a similar sell to Dominic? Look, we need you to play this sea line. We need you to do this. Actually, yeah. I mean, I, I, it was I, one I, of our earliest castings. He was because yeah. really? I it was. Yeah. It was. I got to work with Dom on Carter and and. He's such a, 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 f a funny guy, and, and he's kind of impish, and I, and I just, I couldn't get it out of my head, this, this idea of sea lions being in, uh, just these sort of, uh, sort of uh, street kind of <laughs> thuggish Londoners, and uh, you know what I mean? And it just seemed funny to me, and, and then I couldn't get, uh, uh, Basically, I wanted a wire reunion. That's really what I wanted. I mean, <laughs> no, but it's true. I really thought it was, uh, knowing Dominic, I thought that would be really funny, and him and Idris would really sound great against each other. And, uh, and it worked. It worked like gangbusters. We did a first session with you guys a long time ago. Yeah. And it just clicked. Yeah. I'll wait for the spin-off. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, more questions. This lady here at the front with a hand up. Hi, um, I'm from the Salvation Army newspaper, The War Cry, and the question is for Ellen. Um, what has Dory taught you over the years, and what can we learn from her? Uh, well, I think that everybody relates to Dory so much or, or wants to relate to her because she's so optimistic, and because she has this supposed disability, she doesn't really worry about the past or try to analyze the future, and. and it doesn't paralyze her to make decisions. She's just spontaneous and she's non-judgmental and she's, no matter what mood somebody else is in, it doesn't impact her, she doesn't take it personally. So I think it's basically, you know, it, it reminds me and which is what I try to do every day and say on the show is be kind to one another. Um, I think that's what Dory does. And the whole just keep swimming from the very first one that it's attached to my fish's character is sort of a wonderful um, mantra that, that I think that really I didn't know I had most of my life and most of my career, but I, I have applied it to my life and I think a lot of people apply it to their lives. I just want to ask a question to you guys, Lindsay and Angus, just on a technical point of view. Comparing this to what was capable of back in 2003, what could you do now that you couldn't do before visually, because this is a stunning film, well, as well as an emotional film. Thank you. I would really like to say that uh, if you look about what you think about what your computer could do in in, uh, in 2003, what your phone could do in 2003, it certainly it'd be hard to go back and uh, use that now. Uh, we have a lot of technical advantages on this film. Uh, certainly, the water is a lot uh, nicer, but the character Hank would have not been possible back in 2003 because of the amount of uh, animated variables and uh, just the technical aspects of Hank, both, uh, uh, I think, just from the fact that you have one tentacle has all of these different bends in it and all of the suckers, and that's multiplied times seven. That's actually why we lost one of the tentacles. It was a little bit, a little bit too cheaper. Much. Yeah, a little too much. Too much. Uh, no, and I, yeah, I mean, if you notice, um, you know, in the first film, like we never break this, almost never break the surface of the water. The camera doesn't. Um, so all of those kind of handcuffs that we had on the first film were like, you know, when Andrew would be like, hey, can we, and we'd be like, can we only have like three of those shots because we can't do them. Um, the, the, there was basically, they were gone on this film. So it was kind of wherever the camera, they wanted to move the camera, wherever we wanted to put it, it was kind of a, a free for all. Um, and you would think it would go faster there, but no, it turns out. The appetite just gets bigger. Yeah, the, the, for the technical, <laughs> your, your computing like, power goes here and your, your creative appetite goes here, yeah. always. It's like a constant. Yeah. Yeah. I'm st starting to forgive a 13 year wait. There's yeah. A, <laughs> a lot of tentacles to do. Yeah. Um, more questions, please. How about this lady in the black and white top here? Hi, this is to Ellen. Sorry, it's a sort of double question. Oh, I'm Nicole from the Mail. Um, to me, uh, Dory is perhaps Disney's first disabled. Um, Heroin. I don't know whether you agree, but to me, she reminded me of something, somebody with like uh, sort of dementia, and that it's it's quite moving seeing her really struggle with this disability. And I was wondering also if you could talk about that three-year gap where you didn't have work and Dory came. Did she sort of save your life in some ways, or certainly save your career? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the coincidence was I was doing this for three years uh, because it took three years to, to do Nemo, and it, it came out coincidentally when I launched my talk show. So right around the time in the middle of doing Nemo is when we were out trying to sell my talk show. Um, so it, it came at an amazing time, obviously, um, and quite a coincidence, but, um, you know, it, it certainly saved my life in, in many ways. And just, just that kind of uh, confidence that, that Andrew had, he didn't, I don't know if he was even aware of my situation, because he's so immersed in his world, he probably didn't realize that, that I wasn't working mm -hmm. and that uh, I wasn't desirable. He, if, if he knew I wasn't desirable, he may not have asked <laughs> for me. <laughs> People would have said, why do you want her? Uh, but um, so it was just a, a, the timing thing. And, um, and as far as the first, uh, you know, I think, I think it's an important message, as Andrew said, that this supposed disability that she has is her strength. And I think that we all have to look for whatever it is about us that we feel is our disability, whether it's physical or, or mental, and look at it as what makes us special and makes us unique and, and use that to empower us. The man behind the camera. At the heart of Nemo and now Dory is a celebration of the importance of family in all its different beautiful forms. And I'm curious uh, how you felt about the varied responses that element of particularly this story has had. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the thing about Dory is that uh, we always felt, we used to even say this on the first film, she just sort of creates families wherever she goes. And if you really analyze this film, she, there's three families. There's the family that she's made with Marlon Nemo. There's the family she's looking for. And then there's everybody she meets along the way. And, um, and it's a real, um, I think it's very inspiring. It kind of shows you how much you, 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 you can do the same. And that you, you know, we certainly have the same when we make movies. You end up almost spending more time with the people you're making the movies with than the people that you're going home to. And, and, uh, and that family's a, a very, uh, can be defined in many, many, many different ways. Uh, kind of infinite in that sense. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the story is the journey of where are her parents, I mean, and what happened to her and, and how did she get separated from them. So she's looking for out of what any child would do is who's my mother and father, where are they? Um, but I think that it's not about a mother and a father and it's not about blood relations, it's, it's about who, who makes you feel good and who gets you and supports you for all of who you are. And that's, to me, what family and what home is, is wherever you're supported. Mm. This gentleman here, Jamie Gray. Thank you. Uh, Tim from OK Online. This is a question for Andrew. Given that uh, you felt that Dory's story wasn't really kind of finished in the, in the first film, could I put it to you that the character we now need to know more about is Hank? Because we don't know why he is like he is. <laughs> And can I plant that seed that there needs to be a prequel? <laughs> so many people have asked for Finding Hank, although there's been a lot of Finding Gerald they've been asking for. Right. And uh, which would, I'm sure Dom's behind. Uh, <laughs> there's been a, actually a Finding quite a bit, but Finding <coughs> Hank makes sense. Uh, I think you'd have to make Finding Andrew first, uh, because I, it, I've just finished uh, four years on uh, with Fish, and I, that's on another four years with Fish. So uh, it may take a while for there to be a third. I mean, I've learned to never say never, though. So uh, I, I'm, I'm all for a great story, if, if that's what it'll, what it'll be. But, but it would be finding Hank's tentacle. It, yeah, it, it, it would probably be that more just, specific. It would just be yeah, one, one tentacle. tentacle. It wouldn't yeah. be that hard to make. No, no. Oh, no. Just, sure. just, just one tentacle. Yeah. 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 It could be a yeah. horror film. It could be a horror <laughs> film. <Yeah. laughs> there it is. Just there it is. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> Pixar's first horror movie. Yeah, it could be amazing. It would go gangbusters. It could be amazing. Can I ask a bit about the heritage of Pixar? And there are a few, maybe not obligations, but I guess you're encouraged to include A113, yeah. that yeah. sort of thing. With Finding Dory, was it a little easier than Finding Nemo to include these callbacks <coughs> because you had more freedom to get out of the water? Ah. We certainly have a lot of them. We have a yeah. lot of Easter eggs in there. Um, some of them are, are the traditional ones. Some of them are ones that have never been in... Uh, any of our films before. Well, the interesting thing for me is that uh, Nemo was actually one of the first Easter eggs 
actively put into a Pixar film. The squeeze toy of Nemo was put into Monsters, Monsters uh, Inc. Yeah. Um, the end of Monsters Incorporated. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We had. Uh, we always put one of the next film out. We yeah. always put something from the next film out. We always put A113. So there was, but they're not. We and try the to put them in, in the Pizza Planet truck. We try to put them places. It was certainly was easier than like Dino. I mean, my God, we were like, how are they going to do that? Um, pizza but I, truck. I know, yeah. the pizza truck, exactly. How do you exactly. put a pizza truck in prehistoric times? Um, but uh, we try to put them in places that aren't obvious because, you know, what's the fun in that? So. Yeah. And we're told we're not supposed to say, I, I, I learned that the hard way. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, we're not supposed to say where the Pizza Planet truck is. I think we can say where A113 is, but I don't think. It's in two places in the film. I think I worked it out. Did you? Okay. Is, it, is it on the tails of? Yes. That's one of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the they both thing. say their ailments in it. Yes, and their they tags are A113. Yeah. 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 Right, okay, because if I got that wrong, that would have been really That would have been really embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Can't have that. <laughs> um, anyway, more questions. This lady here. Hi there, Carrie from Diva Magazine. My question's for you, Ellen. Um, Dory, as we know, suffers from short-term memory loss, um, which could come in handy from time to time. And I was wondering if there was any moments in your career that you'd rather forget happened. Um, <laughs> As opposed to now. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, uh, can't remember any. Um, I, you know, no, I, I don't, it seems really corny and cliche to say, but every single thing that's happened has been either a beautiful blessing or a lesson. And so I look at everything as a guidepost and like even the most horrible things that uh, supposedly horrible things or embarrassing things are character forming and um, I'm grateful because it made me a more compassionate person and I'm happy for everything that happened. Another question please. Somebody new if they wouldn't mind. This man. He's new. He's so new. He's new. So fresh. You, David, from the Crack Magazine. Um, Ellen, did you find yourself adopting, you know, people, to, actors talk about taking their parts home with them. Did you find that mode of delivery kind of went with you when you went home? Or, or you like that anyway? Or um, No, not really. It was, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm in the studio and I'm immersed in it when I'm there. And then... Uh, it's, it's also, mainly what stays with me is the out-of-breathness of it all. Here it comes. Here it comes. It, uh, it was, uh, I would like those as outtakes, please, <laughs> on the DVD of how many times you made me breathless or scream. I mean, because Dory was always left behind, so there was lots of, can you just do that one more time? It's like, how can you not use a... <laughs> <laughs> from, from before, you already have that. I mean, and for three years, there was lots of that. So I took home anger and resentment for <laughs> just bitterness. Uh, yeah. It was the first thing that you said to me after watching the movie. She walked up, she goes, where was all the panting? That I <laughs> so many it? times you wanted me to pant more. I think it's some weird, freaky, kink, yeah. kinky thing you're into. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got that at home watching me just oh, pant yeah. and scream. Oh. That's yeah. the third film right yeah. there, just you <laughs> yeah. panting. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Johnny, did you take any bit of Gerald home? Was, that, was, was there a bit of sea line in you? Uh, no, but I'm, I play Rudder, don't I? Rudder, right, yeah, right, I play yeah, Rudder, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 well, I think, I think he was lazy. I think I was lazy before I met Rudder. And, <laughs> and uh, things haven't changed much since. So, no, I, I think I just fitted rather well into the role. Mm -hmm. And probably that's why I came to mind when Andrew thought, who can we get into someone who just sits amazing. around on a rock all day <laughs> doing nothing? I know, there's that English. <laughs> no, I would love to have been in the studio when you were recording the off, 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 off. Yeah, you, you, you jumped right to it. There yeah, was, there was no difficulty getting there. But the difficult one was the oh, yeah, yeah. Which Andrew, which Andrew does really well, and I can't. And I think Idris was even worse than me. So is that you or me in the film? I think it's... No, no, that's all you. Else? That's all you. Yeah. What the hell is this for? <laughs> <laughs> but he did it. Yeah. I would love it if you hadn't have put it in and just went, yeah. I bet he didn't make <laughs> you do it lots, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. More well. questions. Just two to go, so make them incredibly good. Anybody? Lady in white. 
Thanks. It's not really a question. It's not really a question. I write for the Daily Express. I'm a life coach, and I just wanted to echo what Ellen said. <laughs> the qualities of Dory um, are something we could all learn from. The fact that she's non-judgmental. She does forget bad stuff that happens. If only we all had the capacity to do that and not get hung up on stuff. And I think that in that way, she is a role model. She's almost like a life coach's dream that she forgives, she doesn't judge, she lets go, and she's always optimistic. So I just wanted to echo that's such a fantastic message to give to kids as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, Just Keep Swimming is in everyone's head forever. Yeah. So thanks for that as well. Yeah. Forever. Um, another question, please. Or shall we call it a day? You oh, all right, go on. I've got one question for everyone, my nine-year-old. <laughs> um, uh, for everyone, he's, uh, it's Con, he's nine years old. He wants to know, what does it feel like um, to uh, work with such famous characters on a movie? Interesting. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, well, I mean... Uh, for me, personally, joining the film uh, as a capacity as co-director, what was interesting to me is, of course, there's a tremendous expectation for the sequel to Finding Nemo. Uh, but what's so wonderful about the first movie is the characters are so well drawn, and you feel like you know them. And you're not necessarily making the movie for the audience. You're making it to make yourself laugh, and you're working with these really well-drawn characters that you're working your best to make sure it's what the character would say, what the character would do. And so when you're making a, a sequel like this, you're just trying to do justice uh, for, for Dory. And what's uh, amazing for me, from my perspective, uh, having worked on the first film, but then on this film, uh, we worked very hard making Dory and working on her backstory. And then when we first got into the recording booth with Ellen, uh, there was a whole side of it that we were missing. And we first heard her uh, speak the lines again and, and, and really inform the character with her own sensibility. It really reminded us uh, how three-dimensional the character is and how the missing element of, of, of the vocal performance and how that would inform the writing and, and the whole movie, since so much of it is based around uh, Dory herself. And so it was discovering Dory not only for the movie but for the audience and for ourselves and rediscovering her. That was what was most exciting for me. And, and the new characters we were discovering along the way. But it was all came from Dory and all was based around her story. So it was a journey of discovery and rem reminding ourselves who these characters are. Yeah, it's described like it's going on a long car trip with people you already know, but yeah. the car trip keeps going on, and you end up talking about stuff you would have not talked about otherwise. And so you start learning more about Marlon and Dory and Nemo and stuff. And then, of course, meeting the new characters is always half the fun. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming down. And please give a warm round of applause to the wonderful Andrew, Ellen, Lindsay, and, of course, Dominic and Angus. Please.